folks, Ariel over here at Finance, where today we're going to do another pickle recipe. And again, if you haven't been here before, welcome. I'm Ariel, I live in an off-grid tiny house in the western mountains. And yes, you can indeed cook in a tiny house and can and preserve food. And we have a whole bunch of videos showing that. Um, if you didn't watch the last one on how to make refrigerator pickles that are not canned, uh, go check that out. But um, I am using, it is usually ideal to use small cucumbers for pickling. Like cucumbers about that size, that's a good pickling size. This is big. These I got because they were discounted. Um, I My cucumber vines got too cold with snow right up to uh, and on the first day of summer this year and so they just didn't produce well. So I had to buy some and so I went with the cheapest ones I could buy and they were some bigger ones from the neighboring state where it's a little warmer. So that is why I am using this size to make pickles from. That would not be normally my first choice. But you get a lot more cucumber uh, volume out of every single cucumber if you let them get that big. So what I've done is mostly filled up uh, a bowl here I've been slicing. Uh, I've talked about this before in other videos. This is a mandolin slicer. It is super uh, efficient for slicing veggies nice and evenly. It's also super efficient at slicing your own self open. So if you're gonna use one, I warned you, be very, very careful. Um, so we've got a full bowl of cucumbers sliced up here and we're going to salt these which is going to get the salt soaking into them and kind of drawing a little bit of moisture. I'm going to use, this is a third a cup measure, I'm going to make that kind of heaping up actually. You don't need to use uh, pickling salt, real salt with all the minerals in it works just fine. I've done this for years. Um, that's Redmond Real, that's why it looks all dirty. So we're going to put that in there and then I'm just going to mix it in here slightly. If you want to make these really, really crispy, you can even put them in some ice water and let them soak. I'm not going to do that, partly because I'm a little bit lazy and don't want to take the time to, partly because I don't usually keep ice in my very small freezer here because I don't use it for much of anything and so I don't usually make the space to store it. So I don't have any ice around. I certainly could have got some if, I, if it was important to me, but, or made some. Um, but it wasn't. But just if you really want to do uh, really, really crispy pickles, um, that can help a little bit. And if you would do that, I would just cover this with a little bit of water and just put a pile of ice cubes on top and let it sit for a couple hours. As I said today, that's not what we're doing here. But you can already feel uh, with most veggies, especially cucumbers, which have lots of water in them, the salt kind of starts to draw the moisture out and I can feel that even as I mix them up there. So I just kind of got my salt coated over them all. They're going to sit there for just a few minutes and we are going to make our brine. And once again, this is a sweet pickle variety. I love cucumbers. If you've been watching many cooking videos, you know I have several recipes for quick cucumber salads, refrigerator pickles, at some point there'll be one for dill pickles because I love those too. I just still have some left from the last time I made a batch, so I don't need to make any more right now, but I did run out of sweet ones. So for our brine, we're going to mix up, we're gonna make this hot because I am canning these. You would not have to, you could do this exact same recipe and you could leave it in the fridge. Uh, again, they keep for a little bit, but I already have refrigerator pickles, you know, those two and a half quarts we made the other day that are going to um, be my first ones to use up. So I wanna can these because I wanna be able to use them whenever I want in the whole next year. So, I am going to heat all this up because when you're canning things, you need everything to be hot. I'm going to do three cups of vinegar. Again, I'm using a real apple cider vinegar, so there's, there's floaties there in the bottom. I kind of shook it up, but you can probably still see some. Um, a quart jar is four cups, so I can use that to measure somewhat accurately. As you probably know, I don't usually feel a need to measure everything very precisely. Again, you can see the floaties in the bottom there. We're gonna say that's about three cups. And this we are making hot. So we're gonna come over here to the stove, pour this in here, gonna turn the heat on. 
let that start to heat up. Uh, also in there, because I'm making sweet pickles, I am going to add honey. I need two cups, and that's about what I have in this jar, so I'm just going to pour all of that in. I'll clean that jar out later. Um, so we got the honey, the vinegar, and now we're going to make a little bag of spices to put in here. Uh, this is cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is normally white. I've reused this chunk quite a few times. That's why it's a little stained from the spices. But what we're going to do here is we're going to put powdered turmeric in. So that's going to go straight into here because it would go right through my cheesecloth anyway. And I'm going to do turmeric is great for all kinds of health benefits. Um, so I'm going to do like a generous two tablespoons there. It also gives your pickles that really pretty bright uh, golden yellow color. So we're doing turmeric in there. And then in here, we're going to do a couple tablespoons of mustard seeds. There we go. Celery seeds. Going to do like a generous tablespoon of those. And I'm going to do a little bit of dill because I really like dill. That's dill weed. So I have videos on how I preserve my own herbs if you're curious. Now I'm going to just grab the corners there and twist this together. And I'm just going to use a twisty tie to hold that tight. That's just one of those little metal bands. Um, you could also use like a tea ball, especially if you're going to do a slightly smaller batch. Mine aren't quite big enough to hold all that. And we're going to just drop that whole baggie into our spice mix. Now let's just use a ladle here and kind of push it down under the, the liquid there so the water gets or the moisture gets into it. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna bring that up to a boil and let the, the spices kind of simmer in there for five minutes. While that is doing that, and our cucumbers are um, kind of soaking in their salt brine there, I'm going to add um, some onions. These were just in the in the garden still just a minute ago. I got some beautiful onions this year that are huge. I had to actually um, pick the smallest ones so I could get them to fit nicely in my jar. So Gonna peel off some of those outside layers that are a little bit dirty. And cut the roots off the end there. And that should be good to go. All this is gonna go back into the garden. I can smell the, the pickling spices and everything in there already, and it smells wonderful. I'm actually going to use my mandolin slicer again to make my onion slices really nice and thin. Again, if you're going to use one of these, be very careful. But you can see what, what the advantage is of learning to use one carefully because they do make such a, I shouldn't have cut the top off that onion. That makes it a little harder to slice down to the end off to use it. If you're going to do this, leave the top on like that, which I just forgot to do. It gives you something to hang on to. But you can see what beautifully nice, even slices it makes. And these are so thin, we can mix them into our cucumbers there. So we're just going to pile them in here, and you can see with the slices being so thin how they just kind of come apart into the individual rings, which is perfect. You can even just kind of gently work them with your thumbs there. And you could use any kind of onion you want. Um, I plant mostly yellow onions because they're the ones that store the best for me and seem to grow the biggest. Um, like I said, I've got some real big ones out there. I'll have to do a video soon on onion harvesting. But there we've got our onions, and we want to add some garlic. I already peeled a few of these. These cloves are um, still pretty fresh from being harvested. They're not fully cured yet. So the skin is 
is really moist. It's not like dry and papery. It still feels very fresh and and snug around each clove. So it's a little different texture than if you bought garlic from a grocery store. But as you can see, I, I was able to produce, there's some smaller ones too for sure, but some fairly nice sized cloves, which is lovely. So you can kind of see there, I don't know if the camera's showing that well, how the, the peel comes off kind of in a rubbery way. It's almost easier to peel, I think, than once the, the peels get papery, but you can't really shake it off or, or anything else when they're not dry. And you could do more or less garlic, or none at all, but I really love garlic and it's so wonderful for your health, so I'm going to do plenty, as you might have guessed. This is going to be, we did three kind of small to medium sized onions, and I'm going to do, what is this, eight pretty good sized garlic cloves. There we go. First, let me take this bit of an onion that I couldn't slice very safely on my slicer and just slice him up to go in there as well. You can see how those chunks are not quite as precisely even as my other ones. Meanwhile, we're just going to give this a stir. This is coming to a boil, getting all foamy and our, our spices are simmering in that, so we're just going to let that go for about five minutes. And while I do that, I'm going to just quickly slice up. This garlic is so juicy and um, kind of sticky. Garlic has a lot of natural plant sugars in it. It's what makes it so sticky when you uh, go to slice into it. And it just really has a lot of moisture when it is fresh like this. It's wonderful. I love the smell of that as well. And you could, of course, use a cutting board and dice these up. I'm just doing slices and if you have especially any experience with using a knife it is often more speedy to just cut against your thumb like that and I'm sure somebody can explain that much better than I can as to why but you're very unlikely to cut your own thumb um, when you're doing that compared to when you're chopping like this you're much more likely to cut this hand doing that motion. Look at that lovely golden color there. So, now, because we're canning this, we do need to use canning jars. Um, these are all corked, heavy glass canning jars. If you can ever get these from somewhere where they're older, um, they're great. They, they used to make them out of a little heavier glass than the newer ones. But now, at this point, we want everything to be hot. So I'm actually gonna move that back, to that back burner room to put this on. This is a steam bath canner. I've talked a little bit before on some canning videos about using this. Um, some people are big fans, some people are not. I have successfully used it to can thousands and thousands of quarts of food over um, several decades. So this, instead of having the whole like deep part like this full of boiling water, um, I'm just putting water in the bottom and you can see the, the wire rack that holds it up. I already poured some water in there and we're going to get that up to boiling. And we want these jars to be hot. Now these are already clean, but I'm simply going to rinse them in really hot water to make sure everything, every part of this process is as warm as it can be. You can also run them through like a rinse cycle on a dishwasher if you have one of those and want to do that um, to, to get them really thoroughly hot. My, my water heater here makes my water pretty hot out of my faucet. Some people even like to dip them in boiling water to make sure they're really, really hot the whole way. 
I've found this to be pretty sufficient. So we're going to just pack our cucumbers and onions and garlic into each jar. We don't want a lot of extra air left in there, but we also don't want to pack every single hole full because we need room for the brine to go in there to flavor the cucumbers so they don't come out tasting just like cucumbers instead of pickles. And when canning, you don't ever want to go above that ring. You need that, that head space at the top of the jar. So let's just see how, well, there's so much water in the bottom of this already. There was, I didn't put any water in there. That was all sucked out by, of the cucumbers by the um, action of the salt. Go. Get all those onion rings to behave themselves and stay in there. Now, you can put these in any size jar you want. It doesn't have to be quart jars. You could pack them in pints. You could do them in jelly jars. You can do them in half gallon jars. But you do need, if you're going to can them, you do need a jar designed for canning whatever size it is, and it's best if you're going to can to have all your jars be the same size that you're going to process at the same time. It just helps everything heat more evenly when you can do that. So, and I happen to love pickles and cucumbers, as you may have guessed from the multitude of different recipes I have for ways to make them and eat them. See if this is going to make five quarts. I don't think I have quite enough to do six. Look at all that juice in the bottom of the bowl. That all came from the cucumbers themselves because they are a plant, a fruit that has a whole lot of water in it. So we're going to just compact these a little bit more because that would not be enough to do a full sixth quart. So we're going to get it all into these five. out of our way. Okay, so we've got our jars pretty warm. They're starting to cool off, but we're starting out with them hot. And as I said, they were clean. If you did not have them freshly washed, boiling would be helpful for that. We've got our brine hot. I'm going to turn that off. scoop out our bag of spices and you can usually reuse that same bag of spices for more than one batch of this because that's plenty strong. Now I'm going to simply pour this over. See how it fills up all the gaps there in the jar. I might have to make a little more. I got more air spaces in there, I guess, than I realized. That did almost four quarts, so I need to mix up a little more batch here quick. Okay, so we got a second batch there made quick. That you kind of want to actually try to avoid doing if possible because we want to keep all this stuff hot. Finish filling up my jars. Again, right up to that like neck area. I don't want it above there. I'm going to show you in just a second here. Again, we don't want air, we definitely don't want air bubbles in here when we're canning. So I just take like a, a table knife, butter knife, and just kind of slide it down all the edges. That usually knocks out any little air bubbles that have gotten trapped in there by the um, you know slices of cucumber because we want it to be either liquid or cucumbers no air in there
That came out about right for five quarts. So I mixed up like another half a portion. So if you take my original measurements and go time and a half, that should do five quarts. Now what I've got here is some pretty hot water with my lids soaking in it. And first I'm going to just take it and run my fingers over these seal edges, kind of washing them off. So if any little specks of a cucumber or an onion or spices or anything have gotten in there. We want to make sure that's washed off because we want a nice tight seal. And soaking these lids in the hot water just helps make their rubber be a little softer. So now my seals are clean. I'm going to put my lids on. Then all the ring does is hold the lid snugly in place until it seals here. And those jars are, are hot, which is what we want. You don't have to crank that down super tight, the, the pressure is going to seal it. We're just keeping it snugly in place until it can do that. Now make sure if you open a steam bath can or anything else with boiling steam, you open it away from you so you don't give yourself a severe steam burn. This canner will hold seven quarts. I only have five at the moment, as we can see here. So I'm going to just arrange them kind of evenly in there and plop this lid back on. Now what's going to seal the jars I'm going to turn that up a bit now that I've actually got my stuff in there. What's actually going to seal the jars is the, the heat um, from the steam that's going to build up in here. So there's a little hole on each side right there and there that you can't see at the moment. When the whole top fills with steam, the steam will come shooting out the, the holes toward the bottom. And that's when we're going to start our timer. Now, important note, I am not the USDA, in case you were not aware of that. You may consult them if you would like to on how to very safely, for sure, can pickles with a cucumber pickles with a good seal. I think they'll tell you something like 45 minutes. So do that if you really like canned pickle mush because by that time your cucumbers will be very, very soft. Um, my personal thing, I'm making these for myself, is that I'm going to can them for five minutes once that steam starts coming out. Uh, that has always worked just fine for me. You can tell when a jar is sealed. This one is not. These kind of lids have a little dimple at the top. If it clicks like that, that means it is unsealed. If it's sealed, it'll be sucked down tight, and if you touch it slightly, it won't come up. If you have a jar unsealed, you can throw it away. If, you, um, if that seal is tight, it should be perfectly fine. My grandmother even made her pickles by simply making sure everything was hot and instead of canning them at all, she just turned them upside down and let them seal like that. She never had a problem with jars not sealing or getting sick. I like to can them for a few minutes, it makes me feel more secure. Again, if you want to go 45 minutes or whatever the USDA recommends, you will have probably delicious flavored pickle mush, so go for it if you want. So as soon as we start seeing steam coming out of these little holes, which I don't see quite yet, then we're going to start our timer and go for five minutes. Check back with you then. Okay, so I don't know how well the camera shows this, guys, but there's two holes down here, so this canner has to steam rises, of course, so it's got to fill up with steam from the top the whole way down to here before that'll come out. So I know I've got steam the whole way through, and it's starting to puff out these holes. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we're going to set our timer for five minutes and turn it off. Okie doke. I'm going to turn that off. Again, if you're opening any hot kettle with steam, open it away from you. That stuff is scalding hot. If you open it onto your face or arms, you will give yourself a severe burn, which is no fun at all. And we're going to carefully take these out. Now, I like to set them just on a cloth. Um, it helps uh, shield the, the scalding hot jars from the impact of anything cold. On a wood countertop's not too bad, but if you have like a granite counter or something, just by nature of the stone, it's going to tend to be a lot cooler than the air surrounding it. And if you set a very hot jar on it, it could shatter, which would be a shame um, after you've gone to the work to make your pickles. So just something to be aware of there. I'm setting them all out here and just going to let them cool off. I'm not going to move them for about 24 hours. Right now, all of those little bubbles that I showed you on this jar, they're still popped up. I can see that. I don't want to touch them. They're scalding hot. 
but any minute here you should start hearing that little snap as they suck down and by tomorrow if I touch them they should all be stuck down and not able to make that popping noise. So that's all there is to canning pickles. And then if you're doing what I did growing up for a family of nine you just repeat that for 50 or 70 or 100 more quarts, that's all. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.